So, Joby, uh, let's let, let's talk about the film industry. And if you don't mind, I'd like to speak about, um, you know, the documentary of Winnie Matikizela Mandela. I imagine as a film practitioner, you would have seen it, I or you would have been. Oh, it yet. you have missed out. And I know everybody's probably going to butcher me right now. You like, have missed how out. How dare you? How how dare? It is the most tweeted thing, but how this week has for three just days. been flooded. Okay. With so many, uh, you know, proposals and treatments and so many deadlines that I'm busy chasing. Okay, so this no, weekend, it is I'll my catch-up plan to finally sit down and find it somewhere All and right. watch it. I'll, I'll forgive you. You Please are a business. Me. You are a businessman. So I, I'll forgive you when you talk about proposals. Yes. But the reason I raise it is because um, it, 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 it raised questions about why South African filmmakers are not telling telling their own stories, particularly of their own heroes. Mm -hmm. I mean, heroes on the continent are, are, are you know widespread. Yes. Even the the villains, so to say, across the continent, whose stories also deserve telling. Yeah. Why is it that we always find ourselves in a in a position? whereby we have foreign filmmakers telling African stories. Ah, well, geez, do you, how much time do you have? So <laughs> look, uh, I think uh, for all African filmmakers, we do want to tell these stories. And a lot of them are working hard and probably with little or no money, slowly by slowly putting together their versions of these stories, you know? So the, the current uh, Winnie doc isn't the only one I know of. I actually do know of other filmmakers who have their own versions who had, that hadn't got to the finish line yet. You know, mm. so there's a couple friends of ours who actually have one that has already been buzzing internally in, in group chats where guys are like, please finish that documentary that you were working on. You know, they already shot some content with her, etc. It just hadn't got to the finish line. And, and, you know, sadly, she passed away before they'd finished the project. What were the challenges? What was sitting So I think just generally to, to first answer your question, um, I think for filmmakers, one funding is an issue, but funding meaning the, inf the, the entire almost like supporting uh, role that the industry needs to be, you know, whether it's not only government, but also a rights issue, you know. So for a lot of filmmakers, let's say if you produce content for whether it's SABC or E or your multi-choices, a lot of the filmmakers that make content for those channels don't necessarily have an IP stake in them, you know, especially if it's a commissioned project. And I think if, 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 if industry was just to switch it a little bit and give a little bit more IP perspective, uh, an incentive for producers to have a little bit of an ownership, because international guys can come here and create our stories and sell them to an international markets because they already have the international backing from an IP perspective, and then they come in and they use the tax credits to shoot locally, in, you know, whether in South Africa or Mauritius, and tell our stories. Then they sell them to international markets, and there's an incentive there again for them. So it's almost like they, they, they get the benefit multiple times. You know, for, for a local filmmaker, it's a bit tougher because, one, a lot of those markets from an international perspective are not necessarily open to them yet because, one, um, you haven't shot all that many films. Nobody quite knows you yet, and, and yet here you've come in with this story. So let's say you're like, I have a Winnie Doc. Are they going to take the guy who has a Winnie Doc from who already has a BBC show and a BBC documentary, or are they going to take the guy they've never heard of? Hmm. You know, so some of that is is kind of like a little of the back context, you know, and, and so, so it's not a, a thing of of, of locals not. Um, not trying or not making local content. There, there actually is a lot of local, very talented, who are shooting spectacular product. You know, the quality is amazing. The, the, it's not a quality issue at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it might be more of a, not only funding to finish, to get to the finish line, but then access to a greater market and then uh, uh, some way to access that IP. But the department, I mean, in terms of access to markets, the Department of Trade and Industry uh, currently is doing a lot of work in terms of exporting uh, South African products, including South African media and film products, to the rest Ooh, of the world. Yes, are they you are. Are saying it's not enough? Yes, they are. But at the same time, what they might not be admitting is that, one, there's potentially... Um, so they've spent money on a lot of films. So if you go back and you look at what DTI and even uh, the different film boards have done, mm -hmm. there are a lot of local films that were made. But the process of one green lighting those features and making sure that they were ready for a commercial selling process is the other side of it. So it's one that great that I have a story and I want to tell it and I'll shoot it, but it's another thing to then say, is this commercially viable? Meaning will now the international market want to buy this particular project? Because not all of our local stories will resonate internationally just because of a cultural reason. Uh, some projects will always resonate more locally than anywhere else, you know. Um, but I think like right now, if you look at films uh, like there's Five Fingers of Marseille that's out right now, that seems to be g gaining quite a bit of traction. I think that's going to be the local big story for probably most of this year. Uh, if you looked at, at uh, uh, Love is a Four Letter Word, mm. that did phenomenally at the box office. So that's not, the, the, the issue from a story perspective is not that. Sometimes I think 
uh, it's great and all to give funding to people who want to create a, a feature, but if the commercial li viability of it beyond mm -hmm. the local market isn't there, then that's where it, will, it, it can fall flat. And no matter if they show up at Cannes or, 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 or any other film festival, they won't be able to sell it. For sure. But just to, to go back to uh, the stories uh, that focus on um, the African history yeah. and particularly the uh, people that played a key role in it. Uh, right now we're talking about Mamouini and yes. Nelson Mandela would have been one. Yeah. Uh, Former President Robert Mugabe. I mean, if that'd be a fascinating one. I think he could be an entire docu-series. Exactly. I mean, yeah. is there an interest from the African film industry to tell such stories? I think there is. I just I don't think that filmmaker is screaming loud enough, maybe, and we don't know who that is. Look, funny enough, my business partner and I there was you know, after watching uh, there's a, there's a series on Netflix that we really love. Uh, there's there's one particularly that one that follows uh, the the great uh, Colombian drug dealer. What's his name? Um, oh dear. Yeah, I've, I've gone blank. I don't but do drugs, I do wine. No, no, no. <laughs> but anyways, uh, what we loved about the storytelling uh, arc that they used was it was over multiple series and episodes. Mm -hmm. and we actually thought, that'd be great to do something around, like, let's say, Idi Amin or even, mm -hmm. like, Uhuru uh, Kenyatta. For sure. Uh, you know, like, uh, and there's some stories that are just very weird and tragic stories from, a, from an African perspective, but historically they need to be told, you know? Like Mobutu Sesekos of this world. Mm -hmm. That story needs to be told, you know? How did this guy pillage and, and clean out a country and then disappear? And where did all this money go? Mm. So for, even from a docu-series perspective, I think on the African continent, we are rich with stories. Mm -hmm. the, the stories are there. Who's going to tap them? That, that's, that's what the opportunity is. Joby, I'm looking out for your next work. Maybe it will be you. Maybe. <laughs> Joey, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for Thank your you for time. That was Joey Bakama, who is a, a producer uh, here in uh, South Africa, and the company that he produces for is Callback Dreams.